Hi, everybody. Uh, as I mentioned at the end of the uh, part one video, we're going to do, uh, so 2.3 part two is just going to do some business applications of this math that we're learning. So let me uh, share my screen with you. And here we go. And pow, there we are. So business, again, this is from the textbook, page 102, and uh, section 2.3, business and economics. So before we could do this, we need to go through some just very basic definitions of uh, business terms, uh, terminology. So the first thing is <clears throat> cost. Cost is the money that you have to spend to produce your item. You want to you manufacture something? It costs money. Now, there are different kinds of costs. One kind of cost is a fixed cost, meaning that it doesn't matter how many unit, how many uh, uh, products, bicycle, let's say I'm making bicycles, whatever. It doesn't matter how many bicycles I make. I have to pay this no matter what. Even if I don't do anything, like I may have to pay rent on the building. Now, whether I make one bicycle, a thousand bicycles, or no bicycles, I, I have to pay the same rent on the building. And th th those are called fixed uh, costs. Uh, I got to buy the machine that makes the building, that makes the bicycles, uh, you know, and that's uh, now once I, I got to buy the machine or, or maybe I rent the machine, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, <clears throat> that costs money, even if I don't make anything, even if I don't make a single bicycle, the, that so these are costs that, that don't have anything to do with how many bicycles I make. Uh, now, the other kind of cost, it's uh, the other kind of cost I gotta scroll is the, the, the what's called the total variable cost. The variable cost is the cost that does de that does depend on how much I make, meaning that uh, each bicycle costs a certain amount. I need a certain amount of material. I need a certain amount of rubber and steel and or whatever materials I use to make bicycles. I have to pay wages to the workers who actually make the bicycles and you know so on and so forth. So this so the more bicycles I make, the more. It's going to cost me the more the more bicycles I make, the more material is going to be, the more uh, hours that the workers are going to be working to make it, and so on and so forth. And finally, the total cost is just if you just add up the fixed cost and the variable cost, take these two together, that gives you your your total cost. Uh, there we go. Now, there's something called a marginal uh, cost, and that's what we're going to that's where we're going to uh, really be working on right now. And let's look at marginal cost. So marginal cost, that's the cost of producing the next item. So the marginal cost at Q is the cost of producing the next item. So the marginal cost at 1,000 is, is the cost of producing the 1,000 first item, whatever. Uh, so the marginal cost at Q is equal to the total cost at Q plus 1 minus the total cost of Q. And that's the and, and that difference is the is how much the Q plus first bicycle cost you. Uh, it's uh, another way to define this is to say that the marginal cost is the derivative of the total cost of Q. And whether you define it this way or you define it that way, uh, even though these two formulas look different and they are a little bit different, they're usually very very close to each other. And, the, you know, for an estimate, they're usually close enough. The reason is because this guy down here is a tangent line to a curve. This one here is a secant line, but it's a secant line with the two points that they're, the two points that are secanting um, are very, very close to each other. The two points of intersection are very close. They're so close, it, it's extremely close to the tangent line. And uh, but we're going to we're going to see that we're going to see exactly what that means. Uh, well, let's, let's, I think we'll see it better with some with an example. So here's an example, example 10. So we have a table here, and that's the table of the total cost for producing Q items. So when Q is zero, the total cost is 20,000. If Q is 100, it's 35,000. If Q is 200, 45,000, 353,000. Um, and that's all we know. They're not giving us the entire function. Um, they're just giving us these uh, really just four points. 
Um, so the first question you want to know, A, what is the fixed cost? What is the, well, the fixed cost, that's really just going to be uh, 20,000 because the fixed cost tells me what does it make? How much does it cost me, you know, before I even make anything? Well, uh, even if I make zero items, it costs 20,000. Obviously you weren't paying per bicycle. You, you would just, you know, it costs you 20,000, whatever to, 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 to the setup. It's basically the setup cost, if you will. Um, so that's A. Now for B, for B, uh, when 200 items are made, what is the total variable cost? And then what is the average variable cost? Now the total variable cost is going to be, now for 200 items, well, let's just look at this. When you make, when 200 items cost you 45,000, but of, the, of that 45,000, 20,000 of it was fixed. So the total variable cost is going to be, uh, is going to be 25,000. It's a 45,000 minus the 20,000 that gives you the 25,000. Why am I subtracting the 20,000? Because that was a fixed cost. And we're looking at, we want to get rid of the fixed, just look at the variable. So we're taking the total minus the fixed, and that gives me the variable. Very straightforward. Now, as far as the average cost, I have to take this $25,000 and divide it by the number of items. You know, I'm dividing it by 200. When I do that, I get a uh, buck 25, or $125. So the average cost is $125. Okay, now for C. C is the, is the big ticket item of this problem. When 200 items are made, estimate the marginal cost. When 200 items are made, estimate the marginal cost. We got a problem here because, well, I shouldn't say a problem, but they're giving us very um, points that are pretty far away from each other. They don't give us the function, so I can't really take a derivative. And they're giving us points that are very far away from each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of look at the secant from 100 to 200, and then look at the secant from 200 to 300. I'm gonna sort of average the two together. So let's just do that. So the secant, the secant from 100 to 200, that's gonna be 45,000 minus 35,000. I get those numbers from up here. Over 200 minus 100, right? Change in delta Y minus delta X. And, <clears throat> and that, and then that that becomes, <clears throat> excuse me, that is uh, 100. That comes out to 100. And <clears throat> now if I do the other way, if I take it from 200 to 300, let's see what, what happens that way. When I do it that way, I get, I go from 200 minus 300. Um, so I get 53,000 which again, that number is right there, minus 45,000. Let me get my, this may be, my picture here is messing, getting in the way of it. Okay. Uh, so it's 53,000 minus the 43,000, 45,000, I'm sorry, uh, <clears throat> over 300 minus 200, and that comes out to 80. So like I said, uh, I estimated one way, I estimated one secant, I got 100, the other secant gave me 80. So I'm just going to take the average and the average is 90. So that means that it tells us that after 200 items have been made, if the 200 items have been made, it'll cost about $90 to make one more item. And that's uh, pretty cool. Now looking at example number 11 again from the textbook. <clears throat> so, the cost to produce X items is square root of X, $100. What is the cost for producing 100 items? What's the cost for 101 items? And what is the cost of the 101st item? So first of all, what's the difference between these two questions? 101 items means all 101 things, all the, all the, the whole, all the Dalmatians. And this question, this last question is just saying how much did the 101st uh, the, the, how much did the last Dalmatian cost? That's what it's saying. Anyway, uh, so basically, I'm just going to square root the number and multiply by 100. That's that's really my whole thing here. So for uh, so since uh, c of x is equal to the square root of x, <clears throat> 
we're going to calculate C prime and we're going to evaluate C prime at X equals a hundred. And oh, I'm sorry, uh, my bad. Let's, 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 that, that's question B. For C equals, C of X is a hundred. So I want to count, we want to calculate the, the, uh, the derivative of C of C, C prime. And then we want to evaluate it when X equals a hundred. And, um, and we want to see how that's going to compare, how that's going to match up with how C prime of 100 matches up with uh, the um, <clears throat> last, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the end, the last part of question A. And we're going to see some something very nice. So uh, for question A, C of X is the square root of, square root of uh, X. And that's X to the one half, uh, X to the uh, one half power. And C of 100 is going to be just 1,000 because it's the square root of, of 100, which is 10, times 100, which is 1,000. Now, C of 101 is the square root of 100, 101 times 100, and that comes out to 1,004.99. That means, just by subtraction, that means that it's going to be $4.99 for that 101st item. And... <clears throat> Using this definition, the marginal cost is uh, four ninety nine, four dollars ninety nine cents. So this is the non. This is the first definition. This is the non calculus definition. Now for the calculus uh, definition, that's really what Part B is is using. So we're going to find the derivative. Uh, the derivative of x to the one half is one half x to the negative one half. We actually explained uh, quite a, quite extensively in. Part in the part one video where this came from. And I, I'm going to rewrite that as one over two rad x. I'm just getting rid of that negative exponent. So now if I plug in 100, C prime of 100 is one over two rad 100, which is 1 20th hundred dollars. And one and 100 divided by 20 is five. So that comes out to five bucks. Now notice that when I do it with calculus, I get five bucks. But you know, when I used to do it the first way, the uh, secant to subtraction deal, I get 499. And look how close they are. Those are very, very, those are rather close, which is why it's okay to use both definitions because they're usually very close. They're not, they're, not, they're not exactly the same, you know, but they're usually extremely close because, again, we're taking two points that are very close to see a, a secant, but a secant where the two points of intersection are very, very close to each other. Uh, okay, well, that was uh, thrilling and exciting. And now, by popular demand, we're going to go to something called uh, demand. Oh, oops. I, I went too far. By popular. <clears throat> so demand. Demand is the functional relationship between the price and the quantity. Um, sometimes you can think of the price as a function of the quantity. Sometimes you can think of the quantity as a function of the price. Um, you know, supply and demand, as I say. Uh, well, not supply and demand, but quantity and demand. Quantity and price. Now, the revenue is the amount of money that you actually uh, take in from selling your products. And that's the price times the quantity. The total revenue is the total amount of money you take in for selling the items. So... But right now, I want to talk about something called the marginal revenue. The marginal revenue is MR of Q. MR of Q is, is the revenue of Q plus one minus the revenue of Q. Just very similar to what we had before, the marginal, you know, when we talk about the other, uh, and uh, marginal cost. When we were talking before about marginal cost. The, the rev and another way of doing it is with calculus, just like we did before. And that's the derivative of the revenue of Q. Profit, of course, is what's left over from the total revenue after the costs have been subtracted. And that means the profit is the revenue of Q minus the cost of Q. The total revenue minus the total cost of Q. And the um, average profit is that you take the you take the profit and you divide it by the num Q, which is the number of items that were the quantity of items. Okay, well, let's just uh, look at an example here. So we're gonna go here to a nice little example and we're gonna call it example 12. 
Okay. And let me just uh, set this up so we can go through this uh, step by step. Okay, so the demand D for a product at a price of P dollars is given by D of P is equal to 200 minus 0 0.2 P squared. And we wanna, we wanna find the marginal revenue when the price is 10 bucks. So this is the equation. How do they get this equation? They figured it out somehow. And that's, that's by the way, I just wanna say as a side point, that's a whole big uh, area, um, a huge area, a uh, very uh, lucrative area in math is is uh figuring this stuff out F figuring out these formulas you know for, for, for different businesses because if i have a business if i'm a, if i'm a bicycle manufacturer and i can have a nice formula to tell me what the demand for my product is going to be that helps me with my planning tremendously and it helps it just you you know again it just helps the bottom line a lot so uh it's a very big area if everybody is everything you know into something like that um, <clears throat> well, uh, we want to find the marginal revenue. So first of all, the uh, revenue is, as we said, as we said previously, the revenue is the price times the quantity. And the, how do you know the quantity? Well, the, well, the, um, demand equation that, that, that shows us the quantity. So all we got to do to get the revenue is take the demand of, uh, at, at a given price. By the way, notice that using um, small p for price and capital P for profit. Just be aware of that. Anyway, so D of P gives us the quantity, P gives us the price. D of P, is, as we were given here, is this right here. So it's 200 minus 0 0.2 P squared. So, and just distributing times P. So that's equal to 200 P minus 0 0.2 P to the third power, and now I'm going to take a derivative of that. And our prime of P is 200 minus 0 0.6 P squared. Why 0 0.6? Because that, that exponent of three multiplies the 0 0.2 and becomes 0 0.6. Okay, now I'm almost done. I just want to, now I just got to plug in uh, 10 bucks. So our prime of 10 is 200 minus 0 0.6, uh, 10 squared, which if you crunch that out, comes out to 140 big ones, $140. So the units are dollars of revenue divided over dollars of price. So if we say, when we say that our prime of 10 is equal to 40, what that means is that the price is $10, the, the, the price, the, when the price is $10, the revenue is going to increase by $140 for each dollar the price was increased. And that could be extremely, as I say, that's, that if you're, in, if you're in that business, that's extremely important information to know. Anyway, it's been loads of fun, and we will continue next time. Uh, bye, everybody. Bye.